This week on A Street of Dreams, markets moved higher on Friday to climb out of this week's early hole with broad-based gains thanks to a just-right jobs report. On the week, the Dow rose 1.14%, the NASDAQ 1.43%, while the SP 500 added just over a half of 1%. The April employment report from the Labor Department came in cooler than expected. Unemployment ticked up to 3.9% and wage growth moderated. It was the kind of report that market observers love to call a Goldilocks release because it wasn't too cool or too hot, easing investors' fears that the economy may be overheating or reaccelerating. Bad news for the job market means the Fed may be able to start cutting the federal funds rate later this year. Bonds rose as bond yields fell following the labor report, with the 10 year Treasury yield briefly falling below 4.5%. All in all, a good week for U.S. financial markets, but the best performance in stocks came from overseas, led by international real estate up 4%, followed by emerging markets up 3.1% on the week. Now, May is off to a good start, and our portfolios are looking much better than the April statement that registered the first down month since last October. In April, global markets fell 3.7%, and the S&P 500 dropped 4.1%, while bonds also dropped in price. Markets fell at the end of April, as the pundits warned lingering inflation had taken Fed rate cuts off the table. This week, they argued exactly the opposite. Now, volatility is one of these things everyone knows on paper is a fact of investing, but what makes in staying invested so hard? Short-term negativity, pullbacks, corrections, they strike for any or no reason at any time, but it usually ends fast with a strong recovery, usually to fresh new highs. Negativity both starts and ends before most people realize it. Short-term volatility comes from sharp swings in sentiment. These are feelings, emotions, and they're fickle, and they change on a dime, often when most least expected. Case in point, rewind to the beginning of this week, the market was down because the Fed's rate cuts were off the table, and then moved up dramatically at the end of the week, simply because the Fed narrative flipped. Reminding us once again, time in the market, not timing the market, is what builds wealth.